According to the International Home Inspection Standards of Practice, the home inspector shall inspect the service drop, the overhead service conductors and attachment point, the service head, gooseneck and drip loops, the service mast, service conduit and raceway, the electric meter and its base, service entrance conductors, the main disconnect, panel boards, circuit breakers and fuses, service grounding and bonding, a representative number of switches, light fixtures and receptacles, including receptacles observed and deemed to be arc fault circuit interrupter protected using the AFCI test button where possible, all ground fault circuit interrupter receptacles and circuit breakers observed and deemed to be GFCIs using a GFCI tester where possible, and for the presence of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. The home inspector shall describe the main service disconnects amperage rating if labeled, and the type of wiring observed. The home inspector shall report as in need of correction deficiencies in the integrity of the service entrance conductors insulation, drip loop, and vertical clearances from grade and roofs, any unused circuit breaker panel openings that were not filled, the presence of solid conductor aluminum branch circuit wiring, any tested receptacle in which power was not present, polarity was incorrect, the cover was not in place, the GFCI devices were not properly installed or didn't operate properly, and other problems related to the electrical receptacles, and the absence of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Okay, we're ready to start the electrical section, which is 3.7 in the SOP. And we're here at the, the main distribution panel. And I'm gonna take a reference photo first with cover on. I'm also gonna take a photograph of the indexing that they've got here on the inside of the door. And I wanna know what the brand name is of this panel as well. So I just took a picture of that so I remember it when I sit down and do my report. One thing in this panel is that we don't, there are no GFCI breakers or no arc fault breakers in this panel. Now we're going to take off the dead front off the panel. Okay, so now we've got the dead front cover off. And typically the way I look at these panels, I'm going to start at the top and move my way down on each side. Check for uh, double taps, uh, any kind of damage there might be in the conductors. Uh, this is a subfed panel, which means that uh, we've got a, a main that's located remotely somewhere. In this case, it's on the other side of the garage. So coming in here, everything looks pretty good at the top. Now I'm going to look for deox compound on the connections of the lugs, the main lugs, and I can see it. They've all been coated well, so and there's no worries there. You see the paste up here? That's our deoxidizing compound. Prevents any oxidation, corrosion of these connection points. Also helps keep the connection points tight. Okay, moving on down here, we do have some double tapping on the ground bar. Over on the neutral side, there are none. Now typically, uh, double tapping was allowed in certain years. So you can note this. And some manufacturers allow it. Yeah, and some manufacturers allow it they, because they've got the, uh, the lugs are designed for double, double tapping. So now I'm going to come down and just look at my breakers, see if I have any trip breakers. I don't have any. Down at the bottom, I'm looking for missing connectors, uh, damaged conductors of any sorts. Now I'm going to check and make sure my ground is bonded to the enclosure and it is isolated from the neutral. So you don't want to see any jumper wires or any tie bars between the neutral and the ground in a subfed panel. So really this panel looks pretty clean. I like to point out that the panel is out of date by today's standards because it doesn't have any art fault uh, or uh, GFCI breakers in it but there is no requirement to bring it up to today's standards. Well, that uh, pretty much concludes our uh, interior examination of this, the, the main panel. I think we're gonna go ahead and put the dead front back on. And always remember your safety part of your inspections, always be very, very careful around this. This is energized equipment. And keep your clients back from this location at least 10 feet.
Okay, now we're going to take a look at the main shutoff for the distribution panel. Uh, this particular main is over on the opposite wall from, from the distribution panel in the garage. We're, we want to do the backhand test right away again. We're going to open it up. And we can see that we have one main breaker in here. Uh, I also noticed right away that we've got some duct tape over some open breaker holes. So we need breaker fillers in here for safety. We're going to take a photograph of that. We're going to take an overall photograph of the, the main enclosure. So right away, that's the two things I've noticed is the size of the main and the missing breaker enclosures. Now we're going to remove the cover. Okay, we're removing a cover on the main. I'm going to use the same method on this enclosure where the main is as I did on the circuit breaker panel. I'm going to kind of start at the top, work my way down. I want to make sure I've got deoxidizing compound on all of the main lugs. And it looks like I do. Not so important on this bottom one. This is the neutral coming from the meter. This is a copper. So we really don't have to have any deox on that. Uh, the other two coming in from the meter, they're both copper as well. So we can get by with no deox. Uh, just checking everything in here is pretty simple. Uh, we've got our, our main feeds coming in here, and then we've got our, the feeders going out to the meter can. Now the grounding is correct. The grounding should be bonded here to the neutral. And it goes out to the ground rod and to the water main. So everything in here looks pretty good. Okay, here we are at the main service meter, and there's not a lot we could look at inside here. It's got a meter seal on it, and uh, the power company does not like these removed. Uh, they are, these are sealed for safety, and to make sure that nobody gets in here and modifies anything. So this is pretty easy to inspect. There's not a lot really we can look at. We can check and make sure that it's secure to the wall. I always like to take a reference photo. Want to check our riser. We've got the, the expandable type riser here, which accommodates any movement in the soil. That way we don't pull any a, a part of our conduit riser out of the can. So everything looks pretty clean here. We're going to now move inside and start testing some receptacles and some switches and lights. OK, now we're inside. We're going to test some receptacles and switches. And on this one here in the garage, the first thing I notice is uh, the device cover is gone. I'm going to get a capture a picture of that. I'm going to put that in my report. I'm going to test the light. That seems to work fine. We're going to move down the wall here and we'll get another device cover missing on the GFCI in the garage. Take a photograph of that and while I'm here I'm going to test. So it did trip when I set, hit the test button. Now we're going to reset it and it came back on. So that, that part looks okay. I will just say this much about missing device covers. Uh, if they're within reach of children, it's very important. It's a huge safety thing to get these covers on there. If they're in another location, perhaps on the ceiling of the garage or some other place where it's out of reach, it's not such a huge deal. But still point it out. But still point it out. <laughs> One more thing about GFCIs. Uh, the manufacturer's recommendation for testing it is to press the test button. Then that's the manufacturer's test, but most of us will use the three light tester just because that's what we do. Now let's go ahead and move inside. We're going to test some more receptacles. Okay, so now we're going to start testing some more receptacles and switches inside the house. Uh, before we move on to receptacles, I may want to just mention that uh, in the SOP, it says a, we need to test a representative amount of receptacles and switches. Uh, what that basically means is to test the ones you can get to, that would be advisable because you're not always going to be able to get to all of them because of bookcases, TV stands, or whatever the case might be. Uh, the same goes for windows too. Um, there's a lot of times you're not going to be, access, be able to access a window and, and get it open. I'm going to turn, on, turn this light on, overhead light, and there's another switch here. It's for the paddle fan. Everything looks good there. So let's go ahead and move on. I use the standard plug-in tester. It's got the three lights on the front. Uh, it's got the little index at the top. And what I'm looking for is uh, 
potential reverse polarity, open ground, open neutral, and each one of these has a combination on here. If the two lights on the right hand side come on, that usually indicates it's, it's okay. So we're going to keep moving down the wall. This house is vacant, so we're able to go around all the walls and test them. This is actually the master bedroom of this home, and there is a master bath attached. So I'm going to just step in there and I'm going to test the GFCIs. There are two methods, like Lon said earlier, to test these receptacles. You can either use the plug-in tester or you could use the test button. I'm going to have to use my tester on this one, and it does work. I'll do a reset, retest again, and it looks good. Now I'm going to move to the receptacle down on the other end here of the vanity and see if it trips the receptacle, and it does. But we've got an issue here. Um, I'm showing a reverse polarity when I tried to trip that GFCI. You can see the outer lights are lit up. So we actually have an issue here. I'm going to go ahead and take a photograph of that. I'm going to move back to the GFCI. The GFCI shows it's dead. However, when I test the one that's on this GFCI, it showed that I had a reverse polarity. So obviously we may have some wiring malfunction here. And we're also going to test the lighting and the exhaust fan in the master bath. Everything operated and functioned properly. Now, okay, we're going to come out here to the living room area and test a few out here as well. Uh, right here at the base of the stairway railing, we've got a floor receptacle. And in some cases, it may require that you unscrew the cap. And the reason we need one here is because this railing by the stairwell is considered a wall space. So we have to have a receptacle along this wall space. I'm going to go ahead and just test one side. My lights on my tester show it's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on, the cover. These are good dust covers. They're supposed to help keep dust and lint and so forth out of the receptacle. Now we're in the kitchen, and we have all these receptacles here up on the kitchen countertop. And I'm going to go ahead and test all these. Now the first one here is a GFCI. Did the manual test with my tester. Reset. And that one's OK. We've got one here very close to the sink and according to today's code we have to be within six feet anything within the six feet distance from the outer edge of the kitchen sink has to be GFCI protected okay we that got that one tripped it appears it's this one over here to the left and both of these are on that same GFCI I'm going to do a reset Retest there, and I'm just going to come back over here and do a quick retest here to make sure everything came back on and we're good. When this house was built, the requirement for GFCIs was closer than the six feet from the edge of the sink. So therefore, these actually are grandfathered in. Uh, we really don't have the authority to, to make this change or recommend this change. We can recommend it, but we can't enforce it. But today, uh, everything in a kitchen has to be GFCI protected, but uh, at the time when this house was built, like Ray says, this is good, we move on. We've got an uh, island countertop here, and uh, according to the code at the time this house was built, there should have been a receptacle on each end of this countertop, but uh, right now there's just one. So we would have to put this in our report that uh, the opposite end of that receptacle, there is none, and we're going to re recommend that they're have, have an electrician put one in on this end as well. The reason we do that is kitchen appliances only have a three-foot cord, and so we can't plug in an appliance on this end of the island without using an extension cord, and we don't like extension cords. Okay, we've gone through, we've tested all the lights, the receptacles, uh, we've taken a look at the circuit breaker panel, the circuit main, 
Um, we're now going to conclude our electrical section, which is 3.7 in the SOP. Mm -hmm.